Hey, how you doing? My name is Mike. This is the FBTV Video Podcast. Today, we continue our series on how to become a successful freight broker. This is part two of part four. I hope you're having a good day wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing, whatever time of day it may be. I'm Mike. I'm the uh, lead consultant for Taltoa, also the host of the FBTV Podcast. Taltoa, we are a transportation and logistics training and consulting firm. We focus on freight brokers, freight broker agents, trucking companies. Uh, if you'd like to check us out, visit our website, taltoa.com, T-A-L-T-O-A.com. If you have any questions about the services with Taltoa, feel free to call me, 479-668-0838. Okay, today we're continuing with our uh, where we left off last time, part four. How to become a successful freight broker. We began talking in part one of part four uh, last week, last time, uh, an average day working as a freight broker. Now, understand when we're talking about an average day, we're talking about an indiv individual performing the task of a freight broker, seeking out customers, getting loads, finding trucks to move those loads and such. Now, we uh, left off last time talking about uh, the mornings, uh, you've got your loads, you've got them posted, that's going to be the busiest time of the day for you. One thing I want to point out, you've got loads posted on the load board. I don't care what load board you're using, be it DAT, be it truck stop, be it one, two, three, whatever load board you might be using. I know there's hundreds of them out there. Refresh your loads. Now, what do I mean by that? Keep them looking fresh. You don't want your load to be up there looking like it's four hours old, two hours old. The fresher it is, the more you keep it at the top. So keep that in mind as you're going uh, through your day. Even if you go to lunch and you come back from lunch, you still want to refresh your loads. Now, what are we doing after lunch? Uh, specifically, we are monitoring, watching the load boards, and we are using our afternoons for customer maintenance. Now, what do I mean by customer maintenance? Customer maintenance is working on building the relationship all right relationships with your customer that's going to be the name of the game as a freight broker any business actually but really as a freight broker you want to use this time to reach out to your customers and have some personal contact now you may be saying well what do i do what do i say well just call them you know you know hey jim mike Taltoa. Hey, man, just checking. Anything coming up you might need help with later on today or maybe tomorrow? Something to get in the door. You want that personal contact. This is a great time of day uh, to be able to uh, work on that uh, personal relationship with your customer because by this time of day after lunch, everything started to slow down. And they've got time to talk. Now, you also want to use your afternoons. You don't want to sit around waiting for your phone to ring or just calling your customers. All right. Uh, to build that relationship, but use it to seek out new customers. Prospecting never ends. It's, it's just continuous. It's not a matter of if you ever lose a customer. More times than not, it's going to be when you lose a customer. And more times than not, it's really not going to be through any fault of your own. Here's why. You've went into a relationship with a new customer. You built that relationship on a personal level, a business level. You're giving them great customer service. I mean, uh, it's just going, it's just going, going like you want it to. And that that customer, they're making all this freight available to you. You may have worked that customer up to where you're moving hundred thousand dollars worth of freight or more with them a month. One day, you call, and your contact, the person you built the relationship with, that, that customer, they're no longer there. Maybe they retired. Maybe they quit. Maybe they got transferred. Maybe they got promoted. See what I mean? Now you're going to have to be dealing with somebody else. You may or may not be able to continue that same relationship you had with the previous person sitting in that chair. You may have to start all over again. That new person sitting in that chair it's a very good possibility they've got their own favorite vendors and would be at trucking companies or brokers that they work with. They may not cut you off entirely, but you may see that volume of freight that you had previously shrink quite a bit. Now, that can be kind of devastating if you haven't been 
continuing your prospecting, seeking out new customers, adding new customers to your database. Uh, uh, people always ask, you know, what, what happens when I get too many customers? That's not a problem. If you find you've got too many customers, well, you're in a perfect position to hire someone to help you. It doesn't matter if you're a freight broker or freight broker agent. Even as a freight broker agent, if you look at your contract with your broker, you're responsible for all employees or whatever you may hire to help you do your job. That's your responsibility. There's nothing in your contract, or shouldn't be anyway, that would prohibit you from hiring people to help you. Okay. A lot of times, if you are producing a good volume of business for the broker, the broker may even pitch in and help you uh, with overhead as far as uh, paying uh, new employees or hiring people or whatever you may do. There's also the opportunity for you to add sub-agents. That's a video for another day. Sub-agents would be somebody working for your brokerage or your agency as a broker agent, but they're going to be a broker agent under you. They're going to be contracted to your agency working under you through a contract you've set up with them exclusively. And you're going to be paying them a commission as well or paying them however you wish. You're going to be the one contracted to the broker. A lot of brokers have it set up where they can uh, assist you with this. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, the rest of the day, I always like calling my customers back. Even if I did call them after lunch, I like calling them back before they go home. One more call. Hey, anything new coming up for tomorrow? I want to have that personal contact. I will use my afternoons to really... Uh, make use of that time to have personal contact with my customers because I'm always thinking about building the relationship. I want it built more and more and more. Later on down the road in another video, I'll share some, I'll share some real life stories I've had with some of my customers. You'd be surprised. You can develop a relationship with your customer where quite often you might know more than their family does about that individual or their life or what they're doing, things of that nature. See what I mean? All right, go have a great day, unless of course you've made other plans. We will talk soon.